Let's talk about Unit 2, Module 2, Web and Digital Publishing. If you're a teacher of this subject, pay attention to the structure of this module. I'd like to help you to understand how it fits with everything else. I'll start with an overview of the module, and we'll look at general objectives to give you an idea of the content associated with them, and I'll highlight the key ideas. Then we'll follow with a look at web publishing concepts. To be more specific, you'll notice in the syllabus, you see two areas on which I'll focus, which are elements of web design and web content management. In this overview, I'll show you where this module fits in relation to the overall syllabus and talk briefly about the content of the module. This is a Unit 2 module, so it makes some assumptions about your fundamental understanding. For example, it is assumed that you know about file formats, digital units of measure, and the creative process. The general objectives in this module are as follows. Developing an understanding of digital publishing platforms, appreciating considerations associated with digital publishing, uh, creating a layout for digital content creation, developing content appropriate for the Caribbean context, and developing an awareness of current and future digital trends. And from that, we can gather some key ideas that are going to be important as we go into this part of the syllabus. Uh, the goal of these key ideas is to help you to understand the required depth for each objective. As you dig into the syllabus, you see that there are even more specific objectives that are informed by these general objectives. So I'm going to present what you could consider a checklist. And it sounds something like this. Understanding platforms and tools considerations associated with these uh, platforms, etc. Layout, the Caribbean context, and current and future trends. So let's talk about the platforms and tools. In the context of digital publishing, the term platform describes the types of software and devices on which digital content can be consumed. The term tool refers to the software and equipment that is used to create these products and digital content. In a sense, the internet can be considered as the master platform. Most modern platforms depend on the internet, and in some way, even mobile devices make use of the internet. So it's important to kind of have that perspective. In this section, you'll come across vendor-specific devices, such as e-readers from various companies, and the software that makes it possible to view content for these e-readers on other devices, such as computers, tablets, and phones. So it's, it's quite comprehensive, the things that we cover in this module. We'll also talk about considerations, and under that area, we'll think about things like planning and budgeting, coming up with a content checklist, issues with mobile versus desktop, and things like that, which are all very important considerations. When we get to the Caribbean context, what we're going to be talking about is what I like to think of as laying the foundation for Caribbean digital craftsmen. And so we need to understand how our society may differ from other societies and how we can address these differences appropriately. With this in mind, the module explores the Caribbean context, including statistics, social and economic impact, and technological infrastructure. We're laying the foundation for Caribbean digital craftsmen. And so we need to understand how our society may differ from other societies and how we can address these differences appropriately. With this in mind, the module explores the Caribbean context, uh, including statistics, social and economic impact, and technological infrastructure. Teachers, we don't want you to miss this, and we encourage you to find ways to integrate these considerations, even when addressing other areas of the syllabus. So in other words, you're teaching something else, but if there's something specific to the Caribbean, find ways to tie it in to what you're talking about. Layout skills and concepts. In this area, we speak about 
page design and layout, and we learn about things like contrast, uh, use of text, links, graphics, considerations like usability, user friendliness, and in general user experience. Uh, and uh, there are quite a few other things, but I'll just skip on to the next section. And to complete this overview, we talk about trends, current and future trends. Some of these trends affects, affect things like commoditization, affordability, accessibility, the adoption of different technologies. And again, because this is an overview, I just want to make sure that you're aware of that so that you have an idea of where you're going when you're getting into that area. Okay, so we've finished our overview. So you have a general idea of how this module is structured and some of the goals and objectives of this module. At this point, we want to dig a little deeper specifically into web publishing. And we're going to look at elements of web design and web content management. The elements of web design in the context of the DM syllabus help us to focus on the components that make up a website. And we start from the smallest components and we, we kind of zoom out to the larger perspective and then we kind of come back. So there are three areas. Uh, there are the fundamentals where we speak about HTML, cascading style sheets and related technologies. And then we kind of take a bigger picture, a broader picture, and we say, well, how do we plan our website structure? How do we go about making sure that our website is organized in a way that makes sense? And then finally, we look at page design, where we want to make sure that the layout is well done on each of the pages within our websites that we're creating. So that's what we're going to talk about. And unfortunately, we're not going to get a hands-on now, but I'm sure you'll have that opportunity. Let's talk about the fundamentals. In this case, we're going to talk about HTML, hypertext markup language, cascading style sheets, uh, using external media, and a little discussion about screen resolution. Uh, the first two are definitely more fundamental and essential. And so I'll start with HTML, hypertext markup language. Think of HTML as the technology, or think of it as a language that you can use for creating documents. So if web pages are thought of as documents, and a website is thought of as this big structure that has a collection of these special documents, well, HTML, hypertext markup language, is the tool that you use to create those documents. Cascading style sheets. Once you've created those documents, you want to be able to change how those documents look. You want to have a certain look and feel and style, and cascading style sheets are what bring that to the table. So it's important to work with them hand in hand, HTML and cas cascading style sheets. As you go deeper, you begin to learn about other things that HTML does for you. The basics are things like being able to create tables, lists, and uh, hyperlinks so that you can link from one page to another page. But once you get beyond that, you want to be able to include images, you want to be able to add video and embed audio and things like that. And all of those are important once, once we get into the fundamentals. Finally, websites are experienced on different devices. They're not just on your laptop anymore or your desktop. We have mobile phones and we have tablets. And so it's important to be aware of those things and design your website so it works with different screen resolutions. Once you have an idea of creating individual pages, you begin to look beyond that. You want to be able to present a complete website. And a website is, it involves many pages. It can have a home page, a section for a profile. It can have history. It can have a contact page. There are many things that are involved in creating a website. And so being able to plan properly is important. And that's where the website structure part of this 
uh, syllabus comes in. Uh, we usually use tools that help us to create our blueprint, if you want to think of it like that. Uh, and some of those tools include sitemaps, mockups, wireframes, which all help to guide the process. And once you have those in place, you have a good plan, and then you can begin to develop the content and the layout, which leads us beautifully into page design and layout. One of the things about this syllabus is that it's designed to kind of build on previous knowledge. So by this time, you would have learned about digital units. You would have learned about some aspects of layout and design, choosing colors and composition. And now in this section, you have an opportunity to use those skills for laying out web pages. So this is partially a technical thing, but a lot of it is understanding design and composition and things like that. And in this area, you learn how to lay out pictures, how to make use of typography, and in general, present a page that is both professional and also looks good. Once you've learned to create a page and to create websites, you might think, well, I'm ready to go. But once you start working on your first projects, you begin to realize that there are some challenges as it becomes bigger and bigger. You have to think about the links that go from one page to another page. And when you create a new page, you have to think whether 10 of the pages you created yesterday need to link to this new page. And it becomes a lot of you know, juggling to try and keep track of everything that needs to work. For this reason, content management systems, specifically web content management systems, were created. And so a lot of websites now are managed using these web content management systems. And if, if you want to get a quick summary of what we mean when we say content management system, what we're really talking about is a tool that helps empower people uh, to manage and run their websites, especially people who may not even know how to use HTML. And we'll talk about that in a little more detail. But let me set some context. When we speak about content management systems in this syllabus, we always mean web content management systems, or people say WCMs. Uh, there are other types of content management systems, and it's good to be aware that they exist. And those include component content management systems and enterprise content management systems. So it's not unusual to go to a workplace that has an intranet and it may be powered by an enterprise content management system, not necessarily a web content management system. And there's a distinction. For all purposes, we are focusing strictly on web content management systems. I should point out that this is not an exhaustive list. Certainly, there are other ways of classifying content management systems. But for the sake of simplicity, I have mentioned these three categories, and I'm just Saying again, web content management systems are what we want to focus on. If you do a quick search, if you were to put into your search engine content management systems, or even better, put open source content management systems, you get a list with technologies like Drupal, Fork, Magnolia, and Joomla. These come up readily. There are others as well, such as WordPress, Plone, Nesta, and .cms. And again, I wouldn't want to make it sound like we're recommending any specific content management system, but it's good to be aware that there is not a single content management system. And even in the context of content management system, different content management systems solve different problems. So far, I haven't given you a complete definition of a web content management system. So let's have a concrete definition of a web content management system. A web content management system is an application that focuses on creating, updating, and controlling the presentation of content on a web page. Nowadays, this includes managing the display on mobile devices as well. Sometimes 
that can be a little bit of a jump for students if they've been focusing on learning HTML. So it's important teachers to take the time to make sure that students have a clear understanding of the distinction between a content management system and something that is just used for building pages, maybe on your desktop or something like that. Building pages using HTML and CSS without the help of a tool, like a content management system, is like handcrafting your individual pages. If you're really good at it, you can probably get very, very good, spectacular results. But it's not the best approach for a busy institution that needs to push out new content on a daily basis. And even worse, a lot of content creators don't even know HTML or CSS. So it means you have a smaller pool to choose from for people who need to add new content to your website. So this is just another way of saying if you want to have a website that will scale well and grow well and is easier to manage, a content management system is a good thing to think about. Some of the benefits of a content management system, they help you to create pages without needing to know HTML. They can manage who has permission to add pages, remove pages, update pages. They allow people to author content on your website from anywhere. In other words, you don't need to have a special piece of software on your computer. You can actually go to anywhere that has good internet access, log into your content management system, and add new information. It also makes it possible to add search to your website. Many content management systems have built-in search systems, which means that once you've added content, it gets indexed, and you can use a search right there on your home page mm -hmm. to find and locate things. And finally, I mentioned this earlier, it helps you to scale your projects. So rather than sitting down and handcrafting every page, you can farm out the work to other persons within your organization and manage your content in that way and grow faster. So think of the content management system as a factory which makes it possible to generate new pages without the need to manually use HTML. This makes it possible to focus on the messages and the content rather than the markup. So in conclusion, this has been an overview of Unit 2, Module 2. We've looked at where this module fits in the overall syllabus. We explored general objectives and specific exploration of web design concepts. We looked at elements of web design and web content management systems. I think that students will enjoy this hands -on, the hands-on area of this particular module. And I'm looking forward to seeing the, the resulting output. Remember, you are the people that will become the digital craftsmen and artisans of this region. And these are the tools that you will need.